on the corner. I'm posted on the corner. You posted on the corner with yours truly incognito. And DJ Misses. DJ Misses, one thing I learned about life, it's all about assets over liabilities. And that's a fact. Okay. Hey, man, earn your leisure. Period. Troy and Rashad is in the studio this morning. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up? Hey, man, y'all taking over the ATL for this Invest Festival. We allow. Right. We appreciate y'all letting us take over. It's right. Right. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you're only first cousins right. at this point, y'all. The favorite first cousins, too. That's a fact. That's a fact. How did the Invest Fest come up? Oh man, just looking at the landscape, you know, uh, it was a lot of people have business conferences and different things of that nature, but we wanted to see how we can be different and how we can add, you know, a different level of experience. So festivals are something that, you know, we all like festivals. Rolling Loud, Coachella, Made in America, they, they you know, it's real big. The festivals have become very, very big, but they're all based around music for the most part. Right. Um. So he's like, how can we do a festival? but based around business and finance. So mm-hmm. it's like, all right, make it bigger than just a conference and, you know, add festival feels to it. So it's like food truck experience, a vendor marketplace, you know, musical performances, games, stuff like that. But then all tie it in with education. Mm-hmm. So have fireside chats about, you know, cryptocurrency panels about stocks, real estate, have keynote addresses, different things of that nature, but still have the fun, have the vibe. So um, that was the idea. That's how it came about last year. Um, we decided to do it. We did it in, in Atlanta last year, and it was crazy. And uh, it was so much buzz, so much momentum that, you know, year two, we said we had to go over and above what we did last year. So, yeah, that's what we did. Three X. Um, so, yeah, so that's where we are now. <laughs> Invest Fest. Yeah, yeah. And, and all those festivals you named, they all have something very similar, right? They're, like, transactional relationships. Yeah. And so we're big on that. Like, there's transactional relationships versus transformative relationships. And so if I pay a ticket to go see somebody entertain me, that's great. It lasts for that time. And, like, hopefully if I, I, I like the artist, like, I'll come back at another show. Right. Whereas what we kind of have now is a transformative relationship with the with the audience, right? They hear something that somebody says, whether it's Tyler Perry or Steve Harvey or Dan Cathy, like, billionaires, Donahue Peoples, and that information can change their life forever, yeah. right? And so, like, that's completely different for our community because it's like, wait, I get to leave with something. Yeah, I'm leaving with something. <laughs> Matter of fact, not now I'm not only leaving. I'm leaving with something, but I get to go back to my family. True. And now they can be left with mm. something. Or I can go back to my community and change how that looks. Right. So just that inspiration, like that transformative relationship is completely different. That's dope. So how did you guys know that this was your purpose to educate our people? Uh, I started, my background's in education. Mm. Uh, so since I was 15, I've been working with kids. Uh, I was teaching for 13 years. And so... I mean, it's just something that came natural to me. I, I saw somebody post something the other day. It was like, find a thing that comes natural to you. Like, you would do without even getting paid, and you do it well enough that people actually would pay you for it. That's your purpose. And so I've always been teaching. The financial literacy piece came in because as I was teaching, I realized, like, hey, this the stuff that we're teaching is really going to be applicable in the future. Like, these kids, right. they don't even want to listen to it now. They're not going to apply it in the future. And so I had an opportunity to create a program, and as I was creating it, I was like, look, we're going to pay these kids the best thing that we can do is probably teach him about money. At the time, he was starting his financial advising career as my best friend. I'm like, yo, we, why don't you come in and teach? Right. Like, this will be perfect. We're going to pay him. You could be the financial literacy person. And um, that's how it really started. It was like, that. this is the purpose. This, this is the engine for it now. That's dope. So in y'all, episode 30 of y'all podcast, y'all were talking about nonprofit organizations. And what is some quick advice that you could give to somebody out there that knows that that is something that they want to do, but don't necessarily have the funds or know where to start? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, she went back Shout that out to Nicole Russell. You, you watched that episode? <laughs> yeah, I did. So you've been a loyal supporter for a while. For sure. Cleveland's fine. It's going to be some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 a, that's, that's a good question. I feel like, um, you know, you should always start with education and find mentors in the space. And that's something that we're real big on. And that's something that we've actually done. Like, you know, we don't try to do everything ourselves and we don't try to be experts in everything. But there's somebody that can help you along your journey. And I feel like in a, in a nonprofit space, A, it's important to see what your mission is, what your purpose is. But then also build a team because that's what people don't fully understand. Like the nonprofit, even though it's a nonprofit, it's still a business. Right. And you got to have the right legal structure. You got to have the accountants. You got to have, the, you know, fundraising is very important in a nonprofit space. So it's like, you know, you need to have mentorship on how to actually raise money. Like grant writers. These mm-hmm. are things that nobody really thinks about. Like, I just want to start a nonprofit for kids. All right. But what does that mean? 
How are you going right. to get money? How are you going to market it? How are you going to do all of these things? So that's why I like, you should definitely check that episode out if you're interested in that particular topic. But um, outside of that, you should educate yourself as much as possible because mm-hmm. it's one of these things. That's why we That's why we started a platform. It's like there's no education for it. Like you can't go to school to start a nonprofit organization. You can't go to school to become an expert on Web 3.0. Like these are the things that you have to kind of figure out on your on your own. Right. So that's why we've created what we've created with. Now it's, it's an institution for people to learn about anything. Whether it's from you know starting a nonprofit to starting a trucking company to starting a vending machine company, like you know, instead of just going out there and just winging it and making a ton of mistakes, now you can actually learn from people. So when I say mentorship, if you don't have a mentor, watch that episode. She'll be your mentor because she actually already went through it. And there's an hour and a half of education that she actually has gone through herself, mm-hmm. made mistakes herself, and then has provided education that you can actually sit down, listen to, and then apply. For sure. Rashad and Troy is here. Posting on the corner with yours truly incognito and DJ Mrs. Earn Your Leisure. Now, you guys come a lot, come across a lot of new faces day in, day out. Who are some relationships that have stuck with you mentorship-wise or, you know, just moving forward that you'll find yourself calling or texting like, hey, bro, hey, sis, get some get some words of inspiration from along your journey? Yeah, I, I mean, everybody we come in contact with, we you know, they stay, we stay in contact with. That's kind of one of the things with us. Like, we're big on relationships, and so we always have positive relationships with all the people that you know we've interviewed, but I mean you see us with us. Uh, Wall Street Trapper is a brother of ours. Ian Dunlap is a brother. MG the Mortgage Guy is a brother. But then I can call Ti, like if I had to have advice. He's be Ti. He's be Ti every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Even like Steve Harvey is a mentor of ours at this point, right? We can talk to his team or talk to him if we really need be. So we're big on relationships because we know there's like we said, like there's some things that money can't buy, and there's rooms that money can't get you in, but relationships can. And so if, if it's the local entrepreneur or the person that's in stocks that's doing incredible things, we want to have relationships with them because we may need to lean on them. We don't know everything about every topic, and we're very, very honest about that. But right. we're trying to learn, and we're willing to learn, right? We know that we need to learn. And so if they have a, a skill that we need, all right, let's lean on them. And so the phone's always open, especially like what he just said, like vending machines and logistics, the trucking company. Like we didn't know everything about it, but we interviewed somebody who does, and now we have a resource. So we're huge on that. That's dope. So y'all working with Steve Harvey now. He's Cleveland's finest for real. Yeah. That's a fact. <laughs> okay. That's a fact. That's a fact. So earlier you guys were talking about properties in Cleveland. Could you guys explain more about that? Yeah, for sure. So shout out to our Cleveland crew, Beyond Win. That's the episode that's out right now. Really dope real estate investor out of Cleveland. So, um, you know, when we were getting uh, educated on Cleveland from a few different people in the space, we realized, you know, that there's a lot of opportunity in Cleveland mm-hmm. and they have like one of the, the biggest medical facilities in the world. Yep. Um, the Cleveland Clinic, I think it's called, right? Yep. Um, and it's still a, a, a town where, you, like I said, you can get a house for 100000 50000 $50,000. Like you can't get that in New York right. or Atlanta or L.A. or any major market. So it was like when we got when we got um, educated on it, it was opportunities out there. So, yeah, I think we have a few homes in Cleveland, a few multifamily homes, and we're looking to get some more. And all the homes that we got, I believe they were all under, like, $75,000. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy, like I say now. In New York, at least, like, you can't get a home for less than a half a million. Right. And that's not even probably a, that great of a home. Right, I've been seeing people post on TikTok. They living in hallways. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's something that people people complain about a lot. Like when they real estate, and they're like, "I can't buy a home. Or I can't invest in in this area because I don't have enough money." Right. Well, the world is big, and you're not limited to just where you live. So you can be an out of state investor. Mm. That we actually have an episode about how to be an out of state investor. How, how to have a property manager. How to manage a property when you're not actually there. How to fully vet something when you're not actually there. Because there's opportunities outside of just your local area. So it's important not to. You know, sometimes we just get caught in geographically where we live. Like just Atlanta is just it. But you, if you think Atlanta is oversaturated or you can't afford to buy in Atlanta, then look at other places. Look right. at the, look at the Midwest. So. That Cleveland specifically is 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 a uh, area that's hot right now, and a lot of money's coming in. Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like we just came from Milwaukee. That's another one where um, you can still buy homes for really really cheap. And these are places that people might not really look at. Like, why would I want? It? But Detroit was like that, and now Detroit is you you getting priced out of Detroit, right? right. So it's like you know gentrification, and different things happen in areas that you might not necessarily see value in until somebody else sees value in it. Mm. And then when they see value in it, now it's too late for you to see your value in it. Right. So these are all things that, you know, you can still kind of get ahead of the curve. 
Dope. Congratulations on the sold out Invest Festival. Second annual here in Atlanta, by the way. Appreciate the it. The itinerary is deep. <laughs> Child. It's, it is there. Okay. Is there anybody that you wanted on there that couldn't make it? And then how strategic was this itinerary? Yeah. Hmm. Very strategic because you got to have the right people on the right panels and at the right time. And, you know, some people might not be able to make one day. So it's extremely strategic. Um, but as far as the question of who we, who we, I want to answer this politically correct. There's some people that this year is over with, right? But there's some people that we, there's going to be Invest Fest every single year. And there's people that have to hit the Invest Fest stage at some point in time. So when you look at a Rihanna, when you look at a LeBron James, when you look yeah. at a Jay Z, when you look at an Elon Musk, when you look at a Jeff Bezos, yes, these are very important people. Kanye West. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, you never know what could happen. It's coming. (laughs) So I do want to ask, (laughs) how important do you guys think getting higher education is to run a business? Because I know most people think, like, oh, I need to go to college. I need to get a business degree. I need to do this and do that. Do you guys truly and honestly think that that is a need? Um, I'm coming from an educational background. (laughs) Um, And I can speak for myself, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, having the education helps um, as far as what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really apply. Okay. Um, and so that's why it's important to have mentorship. It's important to surround yourself with a network of people who have intelligence, who know things that you don't. And so that's what we've kind of done. Like he was always an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So I get to lean on him a little bit more. I get to see how he structures business. I get to see how he conducts himself. I get to see how he walks around people. I remember, this is crazy. I remember when he uh, was starting his career. And um, I would give them referrals and people would come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, this guy is amazing. <laughs> and then one day he came to my house. I'm like, yo, you don't have to wear the suit at my crib, bro. Like, <laughs> he was like, nah, this is business attire, but I understood why he did it. Yeah. Um, and so education is important um, because I was able to, I didn't have to rely on my entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. um, because I had the education I was teaching. And so there, there wasn't that stress, right? It wasn't like I have to make this business work or I'm not going to be able to feed my family. And so education played a role in that sense where it was like, all right, well, I'm edu- I could do this right now and I could build, like I, I said, like that that 3.30 to 12, 12 a.m., what are we doing? Like I was able to build during those times. Um, so it's important um, as far as like, is it the determining factor of whether you're going to be successful? I don't think that's true anymore. I think that was the vision that people – put in our minds right. like like my parents were like yo you have to go to college you have to go to college and you got to graduate and then I found out I had to get my masters and then I found out I was down a hundred thousand dollars in debt and that was a different feeling <laughs> right, right? And okay. I was like well who explains it to me how to get out of this right um and so those are things you got to learn um so I always encourage people you know it's not the end all be all but it does help for sure Earn your leisures here, post on the corner with yours truly, incognito DJ Misses. Let's talk about the brand in the beginning. Mm-hmm. You have assets over liabilities and you have earn your leisure. Was it that from day one? It was earn your leisure. And then assets over liabilities came when we was trying to make merch. So, you know, we was coming up with different ideas, different slogans. And I had the idea of assets over liabilities, but specifically how it's designed there with the with the line coming across and then over, I think that like overemphasized like assets over liability. So just kind of going back and forth with our other partner and like kind of like this is how it should be. This is how da da da. And I just felt like that was a good slogan. I didn't even know that that was a popular slogan in accounting, which I found out later on. But um, but like that just summarized everything that we represented. So we put that on merch. And then that just started going crazy. And then that just became synonymous with us and just became a cultural phenomenon within itself. We actually have a show called Assets Over Liabilities or on, on Revolt. Um, but yeah, you see people all the time like talking about assets over liabilities and you should have an asset and not a liability, like doing different plays on it. So assets over liabilities has become like a brand mm-hmm. within itself. Um, sure. So it wasn't something that we thought about originally. It was just kind of like just to have a slogan to put on merch. But, um, yeah, it's taken off and it's created a whole life within itself. Yeah. It's, it's, it's synonymous with us now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, people see that like, oh, all in your leisure. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That's yeah. dope. So mental health is important all the way around, but it's definitely important, especially when you're running a business. So how do you guys protect your mental health and your peace while running all of this? And what advice could you give to future business owners? 
Yeah. Um, you know, the question was asked before we came in, like, do you guys miss being at home or yeah. do you love being on the road? I know we're on the road, we're on the run. Like people see, it's like you said, we always in Atlanta. Some people are like, yo, you just in Milwaukee. Wait, aren't y'all in Miami? Wait, how'd y'all make it to New York? Right. Like, wait, this is 24 hours y'all doing this. <laughs> right. And so the mental health piece is, is when I get home, is there's like solace there. It's like, I know I got a couple of minutes to be around family or maybe an hour or two or a day or two to be around family. And that settles me back into like reality, right? Like I, I always say like, my mom, I come home, my mom's asking me to fix the printer. Right? Like, <laughs> mom, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, can you check my email? Cause I think they're spam. And I'm like, yo, I got 17 different things going on. You, this is like, oh, you don't have time for me? Like, you know, they throw right. that guilt on you. Like, oh, you don't have time anymore. And so that's just from a mother's standpoint, but from a husband's standpoint, like my wife is like, yo, hey, Hey, welcome home. Right. Be attentive. And so that's one of the things I had to learn was like not only being there, but being actively engaged. Right. Like I can't be on my phone. Like, you know, like if there's, there's only, he's the only person I'm going to answer after a certain time at night. Cause I know if he's calling me, it's going to be something, something. important. Right. And so I make, I make that very, very intentional. Cause I know like I got to be active, but I got to be actively engaged. And so my kids need me the same way that the world needs me. Right. And so that helps. And then from a standpoint of just like a brotherhood, like I always check on them. And anybody that's around us, right? Because, you know, nothing's, I can't take anything for granted. We've seen people lose family members. We've seen friends get lost just because nobody tapped in. So right. that's one of the things we always encourage is like, check on your people, mm -hmm. right? Outside of business, how are we doing on a personal level? Right. How are you feeling? How's your girl? You know what I mean? Like these type of things that, you know, we used to have those type of conversations mm -hmm. and we kind of get caught up in doing all this and we forget that part. I always try to remind, definitely like our circle, like Look, let's, let's just tap in. Let's have like man to man conversation. Uh, so we can keep building because if anybody's mental health is, is in question, that's going to affect the business, right? And it's going to affect their personal life. And so I want people to be as strong as possible, be as on point as possible. So it's very important. Mm. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for me, you want me to answer it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like mental health is something that's extremely, extremely important in our community, in every community. So for me personally, it's just a matter of just keeping balance. You know, try to have as much balance as possible and staying even keel. Mm. and not getting too high, not getting too low. Just staying, you know, because it's ups and downs in life and it's ups and downs in everything. So, you know, you got to celebrate your wins, but you can't get overly too enthusiastic. And, right. you know, you can't also get too depressed when things go down. This guy just, you know, understand that it can always be worse and it can always be better. So, you know, when things, is doing good, when things are going good, just, you know, keep looking forward and keep seeing how you can actually get better, how you can improve the situation. And when things are going bad, just understand that, you know, it could always be worse. So that's, that's, that's like what I always look at, and that kind of keeps me just on a, on a level ground. That's dope. So my last question for you guys is, if you guys could go back into time and give you guys as younger selves any type of advice, what would you tell yourselves? I mean, for me, it would just be start earlier because, you know, I, had, I always had this idea that um, with the social media and – being an influencer and like what we're doing now, I, or I had the idea in 2012, mm. but I didn't start until probably like 2016. So in between that time of 2012 and 2016, what stopped me from actually starting was just, you know, I'm thinking like people might not be interested in it and self doubt. And it's like, you know, who, who's going to really care about talking about business and finance, stuff like that. So after a while, I just realized like, you know, you're only getting one, one shot at life. So you might as well just go for it because at the end of the day, what's the worst that could happen? That's a fact. And um, and it worked. So I feel like, you know, who knows? It started earlier. We might have been 10 times bigger than what we are now. So I always just encourage everybody just to just go for it. Like, don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about self-doubt. Don't worry about, you know, if it doesn't work, what's going to happen, how are people going to look at me. Just do it because ultimately people are going to say whatever they're going to say anyway. You can't control that. But, you know, only thing that you really can control is your effort. And you're going it, to, it's better to, you know, live with, okay, I did it and it didn't work out as mm -hmm. opposed to live with, I never did it. What would have happened if I did do it? Right. Yeah. I would tell my younger self, um, I'm proud of you. Right? right. Like a lot of times, like we forget the, the accomplishments, uh, accomplishments that we're making as we're doing them. Mm -hmm. And um, it is nothing like feeling like self like praise right like you know what like i'm really proud of what i did I'm, I'm proud of the accomplishments that i've had i'm proud of the person i've become i'm proud of how i've created relationships how i've kept them um and i'm i'm proud of the i guess leader that i am in a sense right and so nobody tells you those things mm -hmm. uh, and so sometimes you just got to remind yourself like yo, i'm proud of you and, and the man that you're going to become 
Um, so the, the relationships that we've had, like our relationship is over 25 plus years. Mm. If you look around us when we travel, it's probably the same thing. Like the people that we literally were in elementary school with, they still here with us. Um, oh. And we, we fostered that. Um, and that's not, as we move around more, we realize how uncommon it is. Mm-hmm. And people, are, like we look at their business partners, like, oh, we met in, at uh, doing our MBA. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I met him in middle school, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I met him by the locker. Like, this is different. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And when we have that type of understanding, there's a mutual level of respect because we come from the same place. Right. And we've been through similar experiences. And we know what we mean to our hometown. Um, and so, yeah, I'm proud of you. That's what I would tell my younger self. That's dope. Troy and Rashad, thank you for your time. Continue to exuberate black excellence. Continue to represent that cloth that they don't make anymore. And I wish you brothers nothing but success. And congratulations on the second annual Invest Fest here in the A Town yeah, that yeah. sold out. Yeah, and I'll be looking for it when y'all bring that property down here, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and post it on the corner and let us know where we're going to be at, dog. Post it on the corner. On the corner. On the corner. On the corner.